So pastor has been teaching us about rest. The journey is too great. Can we have the slides, please? Rest. The journey is too great. And we know that this rest is talking about is not just, you know, taking a long nap or something. It's about entering into the promises, entering into the purposes of God, entering into the plans of God for your life. But reminding you that it's not by might, nor by power. So don't think that you have to work five jobs, ten jobs. You have to do this one thing or suck up to this many people. God is saying, enter into my rest because it is finished. So it's kind of paradoxical because it says enter into that rest. But at the same time, it's telling you to labor diligently. And he's calling you to do that laboring in the spirit. Labor with the Holy Spirit, understanding who is backing you. Praise the Lord. So that is what we're going to continue today. And one thing that I wanted to point out to remind you of what Pastor said, he said, rest is obedience to living heaven on earth. This rest is about you bringing down the kingdom of God to your domain. Let me make it simple. Your domain, if you work at a hospital, that's your domain. Let's start there. If you are married, your domain starts in the bedroom. If you are in the board of anything, your domain takes you all the way to the boardroom. God wants you to influence your life. Your life, even without you carrying your Bible. Carry your Bible. But even without you carrying your Bible, let, them, let people be in awe. Let them bow down to God because of what he's doing through you. So that you can establish his kingdom. So pastor says rest is obedience. For this to happen, it's not by our power, but it is through his obedience. And no rest, no rest is given into disobedience. Going elter skelter, doing things anyhow, is given into disobedience. Following your own ambition is given into disobedience. Hallelujah. We will follow God's vision for our lives in Jesus' name. We want to get to a place. A place of rest is when the will of God becomes your will. His desires become your desires. You know, when the Bible says he will give you the desires of your heart, the waters cover the sea. That is his mission. So we need to enter into that, that daddy, in this regard, how do I key in? How, do, how am I aligned? I, I often say humorously that I had a 60-year plan. I'm telling you, I planned every decade that I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. And I look back and just laugh because God totally interrupted my plan. And I'm glad that I was able to yield to his assignment. And it's just unbelievable what I'm seeing. And I give him all the glory. So I'm welcoming, welcoming you into that life of rest and obedience. So pastor broke it down to us. He said, there are three main aspects of healthy rest, spiritual, emotional, and mental, physical. So last Sunday, we talked extensively about spiritual rest. And so today, he also continued on Wednesdays. So please, if you've not been listening to the messages, go on our app or on the website, you know, to access those uh, messages. He started on emotional and mental health on Wednesday. We will finish today as well as physical rest. We are teaching a holistic message in this church. No matter how spiritual you are, you are still the vehicle that carries you is this body. No matter how many, I can pray for several hours and days and fast for days. If I don't, you know, if I don't take care of the, all the holistic aspect that God has given me, that, you know, we won't be able to attain to that rest. So, this is a church where we discuss every package so that your life will not be a mockery. You won't be preaching the Bible and then the things happening in your life do not line up with the word of God. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. So, we're going to go to that slide on mental and emotional rest. Um, and just like what Pastor did last week on giving us space, the S-P-A-C-E, and telling us, can you show that slide, please, on space about spiritual health? A couple of slides before that. Let's give it up for the technical team. So this is what Pastor taught us last week, scriptures, you know, 
how all of this come together, they all converge for you to enjoy spiritual rest. So the next one now is mental and emotional rest. And uh, the mind is the center of all your thoughts and processes in life. It is consistently working. Even when you, some of us, even when we are lying down, the mind is consistently working. But I like, I like what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2.16. 1 Corinthians 2.16. 1 Corinthians 2.16, please. It talks about us having the mind of Christ. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? It's asking a question. Who knows the mind of God? But we have the mind of Christ. That scripture is loaded. There, there's, you know, you have to really synthesize everything together. It says, who has known the mind of the Lord? And prior to this scripture, this is where God was saying, I have great things ahead of you. Eyes I have not seen. Ears I have not heard. Nobody knows what is I have in plan for you. And then he talks about the fact that, you know, it's going to take the Holy Spirit to discern those things that God has for you. And then now he's switching us from the spiritual aspect and saying, not just having the Holy Spirit, but you have to be aware that you have the mind of Christ. A lot of us say, oh, I don't know this thing I'm thinking. Is it God? Is it me? Is it, is, is it the devil? Wow. How many minds do you have? One, tell your neighbor one mind. Tell your neighbor one mind. And as soon as you give your life to Jesus Christ, the mind of Christ becomes married to your mind. But what we do is there's a war that takes place in the heavenlies. Anything happening in the spiritual is represented here. So there's a conflict, and you have to remember that because this is your domain, whenever the enemy or any thoughts that's contrary to God, you have to rebuke it and say, I, I have no business with you. So that your question is no longer, is it me or the devil? Me and the devil have no business together. Rebuke the devil because I only have one mind. And that is why a lot of us say, you know, we can't, we don't know when God is speaking to us. He's in speaking to you through your mind as well because you have the mind. The way he's thinking, he's downloading it to you. The Bible says Jesus Christ is the visible image of an invisible God. That chapter in Colossians that talks about Jesus being the visible image of an invisible God, also talks about the fact that you have been married to Jesus Christ. He's seated in, on the right hand of God in the heavenly places, and you are seated in him. So you are not alone. So what is happening is your mind and Christ's mind are one. So when that thought comes to your mind, Brother Sukomi, I want you to say, I mean, he's not going to say Brother Sukomi, but Suko, maybe SK, I don't know what God calls him. You know, God has pet names for us, right? <laughs> I want you to start that business. He's not going to say, is it me? Is it the devil? Is it God? I have the mind of Christ. And let me tell you, because God is in love with you, if it's not him, he will shut the door. But a lot of us sit in that valley of indecision, trying to figure out, is it me? What are you spending your time what, are you renewing your mind? Are you spending time praying in the Holy Ghost? That is how you engage all these things. And as you do that, your own mental and emotional sanity becomes infused with what is happening in heaven. Hallelujah. So we have to tell your neighbor, say, I have the mind of Christ. The last time I checked, there was no place where the mind of Christ was depressed. There was no place where the mind of Christ was exhausted. So always remind yourself that I have the mind of Christ. And so in the same light of pastor using space for the spiritual, we will also use space for mental, emotional rest as well. So let's go to that slide, please. Study, pause, adore, company, and esteem. We tackled study and pause um, on Wednesday. Next slide, please. Be deliberate about sharpening through daily reading. Of course, for spending time digging deep into the Word of God and also reading things for your professional development, your, your mental development, emotional development. Hallelujah. So Pastor talked about that. He also talked about pause um, where we take time intervals of time to rest hallelujah so now today we're moving into adore what is adore adore 
goes into talking about how we can love and respect people around us. Because what happens is when we have so much hatred, so much hatred inside of us. I know we talk about how other people hate people and how there's racism and all these things. But if you search your own mind, do you have hatred harboring inside of you? And God is calling you to a place of love and respect. The Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 4, from verse 7 all the way to 20, you cannot claim that you love God when your brother that you can see, your husband that you sleep with, your wife that you sleep with every day, you hate them. You cannot claim that you love God. The Bible wants us to love and respect people generally. 1 John 4, verse 7, please. 1 John 4, verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Love is not something you try to do. Let me try to love these people. In fact, to let you know that love is not something you can try to do in your own power, Jesus said, love your enemies. But what? It is possible to love your enemies. Why? Because love comes from your intimacy with God. God's Love. The Bible says God is love. And that when you spend time in his presence, the love of God begins to rub off on you. Begins to, if, if human beings can rub off on you, let, let me tell you something. I, I spend a lot of time with people from different countries, and I notice that when I spend too much time with them, sometimes my language, my English language changes to the way they speak English. I don't know if anybody has noticed that. If that can happen in our realm, how much more when you spend time with God, his love just radiates. And then you'll be able to, you see your enemy and you will love them and they will not be able to understand. Even you won't be able to understand. You, I love you, I love you. But the point is, God is saying love and respect people around you. Why? Because you, you, it gives you a healthy mental state. So there's no space in your mind for bitterness, hatred, the things that God abhors. And, you know, when you have that, you have room to spend time with God or to execute even in the physical those things that God has ordained you to do. If God said, build this enterprise or go back to school or do this, if you don't have peace at home, there's no way you want to accomplish that. If you, if you don't have peace at home, if you don't have peace at work, if you don't have peace, because your mind will be clouded with so much stress from that bitterness and hatred. So therefore, one way of life, Jesus said, if somebody offends you seven times, 70 times, forgive them. So guess what? I told Pastor, I said, everything you will do in this world, I already forgave you. <laughs> Tell that to your spouse because they will offend you. As long as they're a human being, they will offend you. And you will offend them. So when your life, I'm not saying you won't have, you know, periods where you need to have those discussions. Resolve issues. Don't sweep anything underneath the bed. Hallelujah. So spend time in God's presence so that his love can ooze out. Make it a priority that I want to love my neighbor. I want to love people around me. I want to show, not just lip service, because God sees your heart. Hallelujah. Next, we have to keep good company. Somebody say, keep good company. Proverbs 13, 20 talks about a companions of fool will be destroyed. Who are the closest people around you? Who are your accountability partners? Who is there to say, you know what, Nikki, I think you're a little bit irritated right now, you're getting overwhelmed, you know, you, you need to take some time to rest. You need to take some time to spend more time in God's presence. Hallelujah. Next is E for esteem. Esteem says you need to maintain a healthy self-esteem. Next slide, please. The bedrock of our esteems as people of God is anchored on our understanding and possessing complete knowledge and value of who you are. First, who, are, who you are in Christ. Second, who you are to, your, to the people around you. Third, who you are to your world. 
when you understand, and again, that understanding is rooted in the word of God. When the Bible tells us that you are seated, that God has forgiven you of all your sins, and that you are seated in heavenly places, even though you are sitting right here, the Bible says you are seated in Christ. The, the way with which you carry yourself or live your life will be different from somebody that doesn't have that understanding. And sometimes we forget, and that's why we have to renew our minds daily. This esteem gives us, you know, it, it helps us, I like to call it the God esteem. <laughs> You know what I mean? It gives you, when you possess the knowledge of who you are in the spirit, when you possess the knowledge that you are not just ordinary, when you possess the knowledge that you are not just here to be a person, you're not just a mistake, and you possess the knowledge that God had a plan. He, God is very detailed, very specific. He didn't just bring you here for anything. He had a special plan, and he's backing you up. The way you carry yourself will be different. So our esteem, and the, the world says that esteem is a predictor of several outcomes. They say that esteem is a predictor of academic achievement. They say esteem is a predictor even of your health, of your marriage relationship. Of, they say it. They've done statistics. I believe it. I know growing up, my parents used to tell me, my dad used to say, you're going to go to MIT. You're going to go to this. My dad used to say it. And I believed my dad. I didn't know he didn't have all the money that, that you need for him. I really thought he had an endowment. But my point is that boosted my esteem. By the time I landed in this country, there was nowhere else I was going other than that place. And then when the time came. <laughs> but thank God. But my point is thank God for daddy God that made provisions. But my point is. If that's an earthly father, your heavenly father has built this whole book. Your esteem is in this whole book. He says, I will honor you. You are precious to me. I'm jealous for you. I'm zealous for you. I love you. You are seated in me. I am backing you. Go forward. I am backing you. In fact, there's a place in the Bible that says, anyone that opposes you, I will kill them. That's scary. Don't oppose. Tell your neighbor, don't oppose me, yo. In fact, so many places in my Bible, I write, God have mercy, I beg. That's how much, but think about it, you spend your time marinating on that. The, your past. Then when God says, go and conquer, go and apply to that, go and do this, you are ready, in fact, you're like, how high should I jump? And then everybody says, oh, you can't do that. Oh, okay, thank you, nice meeting you. You keep going forward. Hallelujah. <laughs> Lastly, it's physical rest. Physical rest. For physical rest, I'd like to use the story of Caleb. We're running out of time now. Caleb, Joshua chapter 14, verse 10. Joshua chapter 14, verse 10. Joshua, this is about, it says, And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive as he said. These 45 years, ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses, while Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now, here I am this day, 85 years old. Next. As yet I am as strong this day as on the day that Moses sent me, just as my strength was then. So now is my strength for war, but both for going out and for coming in. Next. Now, therefore, give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day. Hallelujah. This is Caleb speaking about, you know, God promised them. I love Caleb. God promised him. And he's saying, it doesn't even matter my age. That's why the Bible says, there remains a rest. That's why we started this message saying, I have given you. But guess what? Like I said, no matter how spiritual you are, if your body is not ready like Caleb's body to go after those things that God has called you to go after, you cannot get there. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. So quickly, space for rest. I don't think we need to spend too much time on this. Sleep well. Sleep well. Sleep deprivation has been associated with all kinds of diseases. Sleep well. Take time to rest. God gives us sleep as a blessing. Hallelujah. 
P is posture. Maintain the correct posture when you're working, when you're sleeping, whatever you're doing. Maintain the correct posture. The Bible says that he, he gives us strength. We can ride like theirs. We will soar like eagles. You roar like lion. Maintain the correct posture. Hallelujah. Awareness for A speaks about, you know, we need to be aware of our health. A lot of us Christians just, you know, we pray, 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 but we don't do the parts. We, 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 we focus on the parts that only God does, and we don't focus on the part that only we can do. Awareness births prevention and or early intervention. We have a lot of data that shows all these things. God is a righteous judge. That was why he gave in the scripture the types of food we can eat, the types of things. He's not trying to be mean. It's because he knows, he created your body, so he knows what works and what doesn't work. So please tell your neighbor, be aware of your health. Have a healthy lifestyle. Go for your annual well checks. Some people say, well, whatever I don't know will not kill them. Whatever you don't know can kill you. And the one you know and the one you don't know. So that old adage is totally wrong. So, but God heals. No matter what they even find, God heals. But God has given you that responsibility. It is your responsibility to take care of your health. Hallelujah. Healthy consumption, we need to have a healthy diet. We all know that. I'm not going to spend too much time on that. Please go through the slides. We have some recommendations there. Also, make exercise a lifestyle. Exercise has so many benefits. First Timothy 4.8, bodily exercise profits little. Even that little, let's still get it. And don't be deceived that because you are small or skinny or something, don't be deceived. Exercise. I told Pastor, I'll tell this joke, but I'll, I'll reserve it. It's involving me and him. I'll reserve it. But there's so many benefits. Benefits of exercise. Improves your sleeping habit, energy level, health, stress. There are even some cancers that they've said that is not even just food that they've seen helps to prevent those cancers. Actually, exercise. They've seen that exercise, you know, when they do these statistics, they've seen that exercise, exercise actually reduces all cause for some specific cancers. Walk, walk, go to the gym, engage Brother Williams. I think he has some, some, some things that he, you know, praise the Lord. So God is calling us to that place of greatness. And maybe what is delaying it for some of us is that we're not ready. Because God will never mock his name. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 13, 5, examine yourself to see if you are still in the faith. Our faith is a holistic faith. It is not a faith of what I want to hear. Examine yourself. So I leave you with this charge for rest. Last slide. I leave you with this charge for rest. Be diligent to enter into that rest. R for revelation. E for examination. S, sit at the right hand of God. And always remain thirsty for God. Just like Caleb, never feel like you've arrived. Even when the world thinks you have arrived. This integrates everything we have learned the whole month. About spiritual rest, physical rest, and do I really have five minutes? <laughs> Sorry, I had to say that a little bit. Thank you. Oh, awesome. Let's give it up for our protocol people. Be diligent to enter into that rest. Colossians 1. Colossians 1 verse 9. In the NLT version, please. I was speaking to the woman yesterday, and I was telling how God showed, was like we were to talk about lioness in a state of rest. And I found out for the first time yesterday that lions rest for 20 hours. How many hours do we have in a day? 24 hours. They rest for 20 hours. Did you guys know that? Am I might be the only one that didn't know that. 20 hours. For two hours, they do some walking around. For 50 minutes, they eat. I don't know what they are doing for the remaining our, our people. What, how many hours or minutes do we have? But they are not just sitting 
to look, oh, let me see that if that goat is going to come now. God built them that way for a reason. And the Holy Spirit just opened my mind to it yesterday morning. That if we as a people will rest in him, just like the lion rests. Why? Because when that deer comes to, goes by, it just, boom, bursts out. Why? Because it's been resting. It's not resting for nothing. And this is what God showed to me that, you know, we should rest. The first part of the rest, like I said, this four, the four acronyms I, I gave you now actually integrate spiritual rest, physical rest, and emotional rest. Everything is embedded in God's revelation. So Colossians 1, 9 says, so we, this is Paul speaking. He said, we have not stopped praying for you since we first heard about you. Look at the prayer he's praying. We ask God to give you, not partial knowledge, complete knowledge of his will, to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding. Next verse. Then the way you live will always honor God, please the Lord, and your lives will produce every kind of good fruit. Whenever God is using every kind, he's not just speaking about spiritual things. The first time he used every kind, law of first mention in Genesis, every kind. I'm talking about trees, productivity, everything about your life, your whole holistic life will be productive. When you look to the right, productivity, spiritual. Look to the left, productivity on wealth, your marriage, every, your relationships at work. Because God wants to look at you and just be excited like, wow, look at my child. But how can you get this? Paul says, we ask that we may know your complete knowledge. I'm obsessed with one thing in my life. And that obsession is I want to know God's perfect will for me. Not just for my major decisions, but every day. So when, because our whole life, where we go, what we do, is anchored on this knowledge. Let that be your prayer. That Father, raise your hand to heaven now, even if you're sitting at home. Say, Father, reveal the complete knowledge of your will for my life. Reveal the complete knowledge of your will for my life. In Jesus' name. I don't just want God's good will. I want God's perfect will. I don't just want his acceptable will. I want his perfect will. Next, he says, examine yourself. Are you still in the faith? I love what Colossians 1, 3, 5 says. Colossians 1, 3, 5. It says, put to death. It makes a list of everything. Put to death. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. Put to death. He talks about sexual immorality, lust, anger, malice, Put to death everything locking inside of you. Have nothing to do with it. Sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, greediness. Next one. Go. Because of these things, the anger of God is coming. Present tense. It's coming. Somebody say it's coming. So God cannot be happy with you at the same time be angry with you. Every day, let us examine ourselves. As long as you're living in this flesh, we have to examine ourselves. How is my thoughts life? Am I lusting? Father, help me. Help me to stop lusting after another person's wife or another person's husband. These are secret things, but God sees them. Some of us, it is our mouth. The way you speak, the way you behave, malice. Bitterness, if you read through everything, it says, so every day, every day examine yourself so that you're always in alignment with God. You're always, you're not attracting his anger to your life. You don't want your life to be a mockery. Next, S, sit at his right hand. I love this one. In Psalm 110, this is David prophesying about Jesus. He says, sit, Psalm 110, please, verse 1. Sit at my right hand 
until I make your enemies your footstool. It was speaking about Jesus. So some of the Bible scholars, you know, they'll be like, oh, this is about Jesus. This has nothing to do with me. But it has everything to do with you. What did I tell you at the beginning? You are seated in Jesus Christ. So the same thing prophesied about Jesus here is applicable to you. And that's why the Bible said, labor to enter into that rest. This is the rest those other generals of faith could not enter into because Jesus had not come. The Lord said, speaking to you right now, sit at my right hand. Where is his right hand? Jesus said, abide in me and I in you. And then anything you ask will happen. Study his word. It says, till I make your enemies your footstool. Next. The Lord will send the rod of your strength out of Zion. Spiritual strength will come. Financial strength will come. Mental strength will come. Intellectual strength. Emotional strength. Rule in the midst of your enemies. Rule in the midst of your enemies. Why? Because God is backing you. Next. I love this one. Okay, your people will be volunteers in the day of your power, which means people will be willing. When you're in power, people will be willing. People that are not willing will become willing, and I've seen it in my life. I've seen it. People will be willing. Next one, the Bible says, the Lord has sworn and will not relent. You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. If you read the whole book of Hebrews, it talks about talking about Jesus, the high priest, Melchizedek, and how Jesus, you know, for us now, we are, he, Jesus is our high priest in heaven, sitting by God, not just looking at God like, oh, how beautiful are you? No, no, no. Also worshiping God, saying, God, you are a great father, but more importantly, always advocating for you. So this say, God has sworn about Jesus, and you are seated in Jesus. God has sworn about you. That is why God was mad with the children of Israel in Numbers chapter 14. When he said, I swear, they will not see the promised land. They can't believe me. The same way God swore about them. He has sworn about you, but for good. Which means, I have sworn. Those hidden treasures, I have sworn it is for you. Don't get him angry by not going into it. Don't get him angry by not starting that business, by not starting that ministry, by not going back to school. It's because it's not about you. I have sworn. I want to display my power. I want to display my glory. And by election of grace, he chose you. Hallelujah. Lastly, remain thirsty for God. Let us rise up to our feet. Remain thirsty for God. Revelations 22.1. Revelations 22.1. Revelations 22, 1. Remain thirsty for God. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, as clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. Next. In the middle of its street and on either side of the river was the tree of life, which bore 12 fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Remain thirsty for God. This scripture is telling you the whole portal of heaven is open to your life. The water of river of life is the Holy Spirit flowing through you. Raise your hand to heaven. Say, Holy Spirit, I surrender to you today. As I enter into God's rest, as I diligently labor, I engage you to help me. Open the, say, open the portal of heaven. Open the water of life into my life. Let it flow. Let it manifest in my life physically, spiritually, mentally, and emotionally. Holy Spirit, we key into you today. Why don't you tell him? Tell him. Say, Father, shine your light in my life. Examine me anywhere in which I'm coming short. Uproot anything that is not of you. Every sin, anything that would attract your anger, wash me with your blood. Wash me with your water, oh God. I open my life to the portal of heaven. I enter into that rest. I diligently enter into that rest. I take on every promise. I deploy every promise you have ordained for me. I deploy men of stature. I deploy men of stature into the life of your people, oh God. I deploy the merchandise of America into their businesses, into their ministries. I deploy the labor of America. I deploy it. Oh, thank you, King of Glory. 
surrender to you, O oh God. We submit to you this morning, Daddy. We receive physical strength. We receive spiritual strength. We receive mental strength. We receive emotional strength to enter into this rest. In Jesus' name.